Hi, and welcome to CSCMP's Member Mondays. I'm your host, Timothy Pajak, and I'm the Membership Engagement Manager here at CSCMP. Today, we're pleased to have Charlie Safro, President and Founder of CS Recruiting, which is one of the leading recruiting firms specializing in the supply chain, logistics, and transportation world. Charlie founded the Chicago area-based firm in 2011, and has grown it to a team of about 30. Charlie, welcome. Thank you, excited to be here talking to you. Charlie, our audience is definitely gonna to wanna to hear your story about how you started CS Recruiting, but first, uh, why don't we start with uh, you sharing a little bit about the company itself, what types of roles and firms you recruit for. Sure, so we are a third-party recruiting firm, as you said, we're out of the Chicago market. We do service the entire North American landscape. So there's really no market that's out of reach for us. And we're unique because we have a real laser focus on the industry. Like you said, we recruit exclusively in supply chain, logistics, transportation. Um, we work on roles really across the board. So up and down the ladder, we will take on an executive level search, but also um, permanent positions that may be independent contributors. And we really do work on roles across multiple functions. So sales, operations, analytics, the way we think about it is if the position itself influences supply chain decision-making or supply chain activity, it's a role that's in our wheelhouse and we have the network of talent to support it. So like you said, we've got about a team of 30 uh, account managers and recruiters that support every search. And when we engage with a client, our goal is really to put a strategy behind it. It's not as much posting a job description and looking through all the, all the bad resumes. It's more about taking a, a very specialized approach and going out to handpick individuals based on the client's direction and what they're looking for. And so uh, tell me a little bit about uh, how you came about founding the company. What's the backstory there? I'm gonna guess that when you ask that question to most people, they probably fell into the industry and just stuck it out. And that's kind of my story too. So I actually started my career out of college in advertising. Um, I spent about six years there, and when I had my first son, I went back after maternity leave, and it was just a grind. I loved the company, I loved the role, but I was working very long, thankless hours. So at that time, my husband, who had previously been a freight broker, had started a technology company in the transportation industry. So the name of that company was Real Time Freight. This was um, 2006, and um, when I kind of hit that point of not wanting to stay in advertising, I decided to go help my husband build his business. So at the time, there were about eight employees. Um, over about four years, I helped with all the recruiting functions and quite honestly taught myself how to recruit. We went through a major growth spurt. So um, we ended up selling the business in 2010 with about 100 employees at that time. So over the years, I learned the industry, but I also really learned uh, the shipper side, the carrier side, the 3PL segment, and was able to transfer that skill set to a third party recruiting firm. Um, so, about 2011, shortly after I had my third son, um, I was positioned on LinkedIn as a logistics recruiter. And one opportunity led to another. It's definitely a word of mouth type of business. So, um, before I knew it, I had a company and my first recruit, my first hire was my husband. So he joined my team, brought his transportation knowledge. We grew the business together for many years um, with a leadership team supporting us. And today um, he has taken a step back, but um, he's still involved and I am running the business with our team of 30. The, the dynamic duo, right? Yeah, exactly. Not not where I thought I'd be if you would have asked me when I was a child, but um, I love the industry. It's exciting. It is so, there's just so much going on. You never have a dull moment. How, how has your CSCMP membership been uh, impactful along the way in your journey? Yeah. So, you know, recruiting is all about networking and being educated and being connected. So, I myself am a learner and a lifelong student. Um, 
you know, when I got into this industry, I was the first one to admit I didn't know everything about supply chain and I had a lot to learn. So what CSCMP has done for us is really opened the doors for education and also for networking and building very relevant relationships. I'd say we are most involved and most excited about the annual conference when we can go and meet you know, old faces, new faces, have presence on the floor, be involved in some of the sessions and educational discussions. Um, but that is really where we're able to you know, really get the most benefit out of the organization when we're networking and learning at a conference. And speaking of learning, I mean, I think we've all learned some things about our, our companies and our ourselves as individuals during this pandemic. What kind of pivots has your firm had to make uh, as a result? We have made a lot of pivots um, and they've all worked out well at this point. So um, early in the pandemic, we had an individual on our leadership team resign. And so that immediately shifted the way we worked. Uh, I'm proud to say that we reformed our leadership team. We've got uh, four women now who are running the business along with the rest of our group. Um, and the biggest change we went through was moving to a virtual remote work environment. So we were in an office for about 10 years. It was great, but the pandemic taught us that we could function and, and be more productive when working from home. So uh, today we are running a virtual organization. We started it in March um, when we got out of our, our lease and it's proven to be very successful. Um, we've been able to stay connected. I will say it's, it's forced us to take a really close look at our culture and how we treat our people, how we stay connected with them um, and we have a team dedicated to making sure that, that we stay engaged, even though we're not seeing each other's faces in the office. So um, one important thing that we do is, you know, have monthly get togethers twice a month. We're bringing our team together, um, you know, sometimes for business discussions, sometimes for fun, but making sure that we still have that opportunity. And Charlie, you mentioned uh, culture. Um, there's, there's been a lot of media hype about the great resignation, right? And this shifting talent pool that we have what impact culture has on that. I know you were just on Freightways TV just within the last couple of days here talking about this. Just want to ask one question about it. You know, how, how have you seen this concept uh, play out in the supply chain space, uh, you know, so far in terms of hiring and people leaving firms? Uh, how's that played out? Sure. It's been an interesting market since the pandemic hit. So, um, with all these virtual remote opportunities, we are really seeing candidates that have interest in that type of flexibility. And the game changed a little bit where candidates previously made moves within their career, usually for money, for tenure, for opportunity. And while those are still very relevant reasons for someone to consider a move, the focus now is really on that flexibility and you know, to be able to have a flexible schedule requires trust from your leadership team. And just you know, having a culture, having a set of values that um, I said this to Freight Waves, when you close your computer at the end of the day, you wanna feel purposeful. You wanna feel appreciated and respected. And I'd say that's the biggest shift is companies just have a wake up call and are really realizing that we need to humanize our workforce, especially in this industry, treat people like equals, have respect, acknowledgement, appreciation. Um, and I would say that's really been the biggest shift. From our point of view, we wanna work with companies that have a good culture that can retain people. We are not in the business of putting someone in a job knowing that you know in three months, they're probably gonna going to depart, we want them to be with companies for their career. That's where we thrive and where we have our success. So we do take a good look at our clients' cultures. We get feedback from the market, from candidates that we've been able to place there and really evaluate who we work with based on how they manage their team, how they represent their culture and, and treat their people, quite frankly. And with that in mind, I mean, there's, there's certainly a lot of CSC and P members out there who be there been conducting a job search or career transition in the past year, whether that's because they were furloughed and they were laid off and they had to, uh, or because they just 
you know, are looking for a cultural, you know, shift in, in terms of the organization they work for. Just generically speaking, like, what's some advice that you would offer some of these CFCMP members who are kind of search in terms of interacting with uh, a recruiting firm like yourself, like your own? Yeah, I think a lot of people don't understand how recruitment works. So as a candidate, it is a free service to you. Our clients come to us, they have a position that they need to fill either a replacement or a new vacancy due to growth. And our role is to surface the best people in our network that are qualified and a sensible fit for the organization. So when we're working with candidates, everything is very, very confidential. We would never put a candidate's resume or any information in front of a client without their approval. My best advice is if it's in the back of your mind, explore it. Um, I hope my employees don't take that advice, but for the rest of the, the candidates out there, this is the time. We have a record number of jobs on our board. Companies are hiring because of the turnover, but companies are also hiring in this industry just because of the massive growth and the market. So um, I think now is the time where we've just seen the most amount of breadth and depth in the positions that we're working on. And candidates should certainly know their value and, and what else is out there and then maybe consider making a move if it feels right. And, and how would you recommend that they leverage their uh, CSCMP membership to be successful in this kind of a job market? I truly believe that success is, it comes from who you know a lot. And I'm not talking about, you know, being born into the right family or community and, and the privilege. It's more about how do you connect with people and, and what network you build for yourself? So CSCMP, again, to me, is it's, it's a perfect platform to connect with like-minded professionals. We're all in the same industry. We may have very different backgrounds and very different roles and responsibilities, but we have a common thread. And that is just enough to make that introduction and start networking. So I really encourage candidates, whether it is with a recruiter or you know, going through your network and, and really learning what are my peers doing? What are their positions? What companies do they work at? And leveraging those relationships to learn more or possibly take that next step for um, career consideration. So just a couple questions to, uh, to wrap up. Um, you were featured in our Meet a Member uh, profile last year. And one of the things that we always ask uh, those that are featured is about technologies and trends, you know, disruptive forces that they're seeing having an impact uh, on the supply chain. Your answer was fascinating. Um, you, and this is before the pandemic really too. So you had said uh, that, you know, how shippers keep up with the next generation and this expectation of instant gratification. You gave the example of one of your three boys needs a calculator for school you can order it on your phone and it's on the doorstep, you know, the next day before noon. What I found fascinating about that is that, like I said, you gave that answer before the pandemic. And that, of course, has just skyrocketed that that kind of um, Absolutely. Uh, angle. You know, small parcel, final mile technology. You mentioned these are things that are so much more important now. How, how are you seeing this play out in terms of the skill sets that some of these employers are looking for when they're hiring? Yeah, it, it all goes back to the supply chain. And I don't think people who are not involved in our industry recognize that, you know, getting that calculator on my doorstep, how much had to happen all the way back to material procurement. So it's all about the planning. And from a skill set standpoint, I think the most important thing for candidates in our industry to recognize is your experience is invaluable. If you have been able to survive and thrive in this industry, there's a lot you can do and, and transfer your skill set. So just one example out there, we work with a lot of candidates that are currently at third-party logistics providers. They may be on the carrier side. They're you know looking for capacity, selling freight to trucking companies all day. And sometimes they think they're stuck in that, that career path. But when you really open your minds, that is what shippers are looking for. Individuals who you know, have access to capacity, who know how to manage transportation, who know how to back it up to the beginning of the supply chain for planning purposes. So 
Um, I think every experience that you gain in this industry, you almost have to pivot and, and think, if I was on the other side of the desk, how would I use this experience, this skill set? Um, and I'm, I'm very proud to be in an industry where there is so much crossover and there's so much opportunity. People just need to sometimes get out of their own way and, and realize what the potential is. One last, uh, one last question. Your, your kindness uh, rock project, tell me about that. Uh. Sure, so we rewrote our values for the third time this year and third time over the last 10 years since we've been in business. And we took it very seriously. I think like many companies, we always had values, which were verbs and adjectives that we had up on a wall and we referred to them here and there. And as this pandemic has just created such a shift and such a focus on culture, we really wanted to have mindful values that we could live. So um, we broke it down and came up with a new mission statement and new values. And at our team outing in the spring, what we did was every member of our team got five rocks and every member also got you know, a set of um, paint markers. And we asked each team member to basically design a rock that stood for each value that we have and then take those rocks home and spread them out in your community. And the Kindness Rock Project, I live in the suburbs. So um, I've seen this, but I've never really embraced it or, or understood it until I dug a little deeper. It's a suicide prevention tactic where um, it's just this idea of like a little message can totally shift someone's day and the way that they're going about it. So um, if you pay attention, you may see, you know, rocks on the street corner or, you know, put up next to a tree and it just says smile or you are special. And that's what we wanted to do with our values is really not only live our values in business, but to take it to that next level and kind of spread the love. So, you know, one of our values is make a difference. So right now there's 30 racks out there in Chicagoland that all say make a difference. And they're just kind of planted in different places. And the goal is that even if one person sees it and digest that and really, you know, appreciates what that means, it, it could change, it could change a lot of things. So um, we're hoping that it, it has an influence and it's allowing our team members and their families and communities to really just embrace the way that we are living and operating by our values. Thank you so much for your time today, Charlie. That, that is all the time we have. I, you're definitely making a difference in the supply chain world. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, so thank you for your membership with CSCMP and appreciate you uh, joining us for this edition of Member Mondays. Thanks for having me, Tim. It was great to catch up.